I am not promoting the use of psychoactive substances, nor am I glamorizing entheogenic medicines to be used by people in need of them. This video is a solely educational and informative video explaining the biology and diversification of psilocybe species across the United States, and hence does not break any community guidelines. I also want to state as a disclaimer that I'm not recommending that you pick any of these mushrooms on your own without serious experience and know how about what you are doing. I personally know people who have almost lost their lives to poisoning, thinking that a species was a psilocybe cyan essence and mistaking it for Gallerina marginata. And that's why it's critical that I inform you first about these species. One, Gallerina marginata is one of the deadliest mushrooms in North and South America per gram, and it is the closest lookalike to most of the psilocybe species that grow on wood. <clears throat> if you live in the Pacific Northwest, you have seen this mushroom before, whether you realize it or not. It is growing everywhere at multiple times during the year, during the spring, during the fall, and for this reason, you must learn the difference between the two. The second one that you need to be aware of if you're looking for Cubenzies is the death cap. Though this mushroom only superficially looks like the Cubenzies mushroom, if you're extremely uneducated and you go out there and start picking mushrooms that only based on the way that they look, you could run into this mushroom and die. So it is very serious that you make sure that you are properly identifying the mushroom if you are going to be looking for mushrooms, taking spore prints, looking at the spores under microscopes even if you really need that extra reassurance. Before we begin, I also want to state that there are many fungi that contain psilocin, psilocybin, and baocystin. Uh, some of which are in the Massospora family, which is a type of parasitic fungus that grows inside of the decaying corpses of cicadas. Those are the kind of species that I would be leaving out. Some of them are also like Clodius species, which are seldomly ever picked, used, or looked at, really. Uh, and there's always nearly better, more researched, and other more ubiquitously found mushrooms that contain uh, these active ingredients. I will make an exception for a couple families. For example, the Panaeolus family, which uh, is pretty much the only reason that every state has one psychoactive mushroom. Uh, and the Gymnophilus species, which adds some diversity to... Uh, different states that are in the more northern regions, such as Alaska or Minnesota. So I will include Panaeolus gymnopolis aside from just psilocybe. So starting in the Pacific Northwest, not including Idaho, just Washington, Oregon, and Northern California, uh, and parts of British Columbia, the most common psilocybes that you will find would be psilocybe cyanescence and azarescence as far as the Astoria region over in between Oregon and Washington. Uh, and those two are the king of the king when it comes to psilocybin content. Uh, and they particularly like to grow on hardwood wood chips in sort of um, cosmopolitan areas, sort of like the outside of the point to find zoo and aquarium the wood chips around there as far as i remember for multiple years provided huge flushes i'm sure that there's probably still some areas where it could be witnessed for microscopy purposes only um alani and baocystis and stuntii are some similar and slightly uh different mushrooms that have different varying levels of the active ingredients that make psilocybin mushrooms hallucinogenic However, um, alani, azarescens, baocystin, and stuntii are all completely different. Alani and baocystis have relatively high to moderate levels of psilocybin, while stuntii has a really ridiculously low amount of psilocybin, one of the lowest. Stuntii is one of those ones that I have personally picked myself, but I have to really, really ask that if you find them that you don't take them, because they have a ring on their stipe, and it does turn like greenish blue, but they don't bruise the same way. The stems are kind of brownish, and it's really easy to mix them with Gallerina autumnalis, which will kill you. And I've actually had people make that misidentification, uh, so please, please do not touch stuntii you even if this is for educational purposes but if you were to take it you would need to consume like 14 grams dried i mean that's a ridiculously large quantity of very, very foul bad tasting wood loving mushrooms in order to get any kind of high and it's just not worth the risk of possibly dying over it so please do not pick blue ringers or stuntii next we have gymnopolis luteofolius Gymnopolis is one of those strange mushrooms that looks like it should not be in this list, but it has psilocybin and it's known as Laughing Jim. Uh, and as I go on through the other states and what they have, I'll already have explained it here, so I won't need to go as in-depth. Uh, but Laughing Jims or Gymnopolis are those really large, rusty, sometimes wine-colored, sometimes orange or yellow-colored big fat mushrooms that like to grow on trees and stumps of dead conifers and other kinds of trees. So the problem is there's a couple lookalikes that will kill you for this one as well, so be careful, but this one is present. Paneolus bisporus, Paneolus cinculus, Paneolus olivaceus, uh, and, Pane and, and Psilocybe semilanciata, also known as the Liberty Cap, are all the ones that you would find growing in grass fields. So if you're looking to study um, Psilocybe or psychoactive mushrooms that are growing in grass fields that live off the rhizomes of decaying and rotting grass, uh, keep an eye out for those three Paneola species and this one Psilocybe species. Moving over to the American Southwest, uh, it's a lot more arid and dry and inhospitable to strong diversity of magic mushrooms, but... but uh, there is a lot of magic mushrooms still to be found in Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, and eastern parts of Texas. Uh, for example, uh, Gymnopolis luteofolius, the one that we just talked about earlier, is present in every single one of these states, even in Nevada. Um, in Nevada, it's likely that you're going to have to go more further north uh, to get to like Elko and that kind of area where you may be more exposed to conifers and woods that Gymnopolis might be able to grow on. You also have Psilocybe hopii and Psilocybe astacorum and Paneolus cinctulus, of course. Uh, this is completely unrelated, but in the American Southwest, there's peyote. I have no reason to say that. I just thought that I'd put it out there. In the Rocky Mountain states, in Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, 
it's quite limited. There's actually only ever been one recorded instance of a psilocybe species being found. It was found near Missoula in Montana and in El Paso County in Colorado, and it was psilocybe asticorum, but it is extremely rare and hard to find, uh, and I don't think it would be ethical to harvest it if you did find it, considering how rare it is. However, there is Gymnopolis luteus, and there is Pan olivaceus, or Panaeolus olivaceus, and Panaeolus cinctulus present in those states. In the states of North and South Dakota, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nebraska, you can find Gymnopolis luteus, luteifolius, and Panaeolus cinctulus. In the states of Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, and Missouri, you can find Gymnopolis luteifolius, Gymnopolis luteus, Panaeolus cinctulus, Panaeolus bisporus, and you can sometimes, in some of these states, find Ovoidea cystodiata. However, that is not uh, always the most common. For example, in Iowa, it's very rare to find that, but in Kentucky, it's much more plausible. Uh, in Missouri only, in the far south part next to Arkansas, uh, you can find Psilocybe cubensis, but it is rare. In the New England states in the northeast, you can find Gymnopolis luteifolius, Gymnopolis luteus, Panaeolus cinctulus, Psilocybe baocystis, or cystis, however you want to pronounce it, Psilocybe stuntii, Psilocybe ovoidio cystodiata, and uh, a couple other species of Panaeolus here and there, like Olivaceus in different states. In the states of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, it's rare, but you can find cubes by the coast in Virginia. You can find Gymnopolis luteifolius, Gymnopolis luteus, Panaeolus cinctulus, Panaeolus cyanescens, Psilocybe ovoidio cystodiata, Psilocybe tampanensis in Georgia. Okay, I'm going to do an entire segment just on the state of Florida. I might not have photos for all of these, but I'll try. Uh, and this is going to be the first time I've pronounced a lot of these because some of these only exist in Florida and nowhere else. If you live in Florida, how does it feel to be in heaven? That's all I really have to ask you, and let's get started. Panaeolus bisporus, Panaeolus cambogeniensis, Panaeolus cinctulus, Panaeolus chlorocystis, Panaeolus cyanescens, Panaeolus pimicola, Panaeolus tropicalis, Gymnopolis cyanopalmicola, Gymnopolis dilepis, Gymnopolis lepidotis, Gymnopolis luteo viridis, Gymnopolis subspectabilis, Gymnopolis palmicola, Gymnopolis peleolepis, Gymnopolis subtropicus, um, Psilocybe bandurilensis, <clears throat> Psilocybe carolensis, Psilocybe cubensis, multiple different subvarieties as well, Psilocybe ovoidiocystodiata, uh, or cystodiata of psilocybe cordisporae, psilocybe tamponensis. All right, for the states of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Oklahoma, all have cubensis, but I will say that Oklahoma, to find cubensis, you have to be in the southernest part of Oklahoma. The northern part does not usually ever have cubensis. You have Gymnopolis luteofolius, you have Gymnopolis luteoviridis, you have Panaeolus cyanescens, and Panaeolus cinctulus, but your best bet is going to be cubensis. For the states of Utah and Kansas, I didn't forget about you guys, uh, but very unfortunately, the only magic mushroom that's been documented in your state is Panaeolus cinctulus. In the state of Alaska, you have a Gymnopolis species that is indetermined, a Panaeolus cinctulus, of course, uh, and there have been cases of Psilocybe cyanescens, don't get your hopes up, in the very far south eastern part, further south than Juneau, right next to British Columbia, uh, and those are exceedingly rare. For the state of Hawaii, you have Panaeolus bisporus, Panaeolus cambogeniensis, you have Panaeolus cinctulus, Panaeolus cyanescens, Panaeolus tropicalis, and Psilocybe cubensis as well. Some of these species, at least the most important ones, I've taken the time to create a map of uh, a little icon for them and put them all over the United States so that you can have this map and reuse it and share it and post it in different places so that other people can learn that they don't have to live in Florida or Hawaii in order to find this kind of stuff. So please give it a like and uh, share the video so that other people can see it.